Initially announced in 2008 and eventually implemented in 2010, Ireland engaged in an unethical and poorly run HPV vaccination program through their school system. The results of the program quickly followed the same patterns of widespread severe adverse reactions and mounting HPV vaccine injuries commonly experienced in other European Union member states, as well as several countries outside Europe. Most countries suffered a full media blackout and political silence regarding recognition and proper health care for their HPV vaccine-injured teenagers. However, in Ireland, it was clear that families and communities would not stand by silently and allow pharmaceutical companies and political conflicts of interests to steamroll their daughter's future. And the medical profession are protecting the pharmaceutical companies by denying that there are any adverse side effects. The HSE itself, in my opinion, are acting disgracefully in that they don't provide the information leaflet that any one of us going into a pharmacy, if we purchase medication, will get an information leaflet explaining what the medication is, how it's to be used, and what side effects are possible. And that particular information is not being provided to parents before they sign the consent forms, which they have to do in order to allow their girl, young girls, as young as 12. What I would say is what the information we got about the vaccination pre Kelly getting it was a lovely shiny brochure saying protect your child for the future. What we didn't receive was the patient information leaflet from the manufacturer who states in clear black and white that these problems can occur after vaccination of the guard. And one last and final question is why is it that the health authority, the HSE, in providing the pack uh, to parents uh, and under the vaccination programme, do not provide the pill, the, program, the, the, the information leaflet that is provided by Gardasil Merck themselves. They actually provide uh, a different information package. And I have read the information leaflet that accompanies the, uh, the HPV Gardasil vaccine, and it, it makes for frightening reading. And I, I also know that anecdotally that there are GPs around the country as a result of this growing concern about the efficacy of Gardasil and about its possible side effects uh, are, are not recommending that the vaccination should be given. So there are issues that you as Minister obviously right. cannot ignore, but I'm specifically asking, are you happy with the fact that the information leaflet provided by Merck who, provide, who, who, who manufacture Gardasil is not provided to parents before they sign the consent form. While Ireland's HSE Public Health Service and National Immunization Office were busy withholding proper informed consent and violating the medical ethics and rights of its citizens, the HPV vaccine was receiving well-deserved bad press around the world, as well as damaging accusations from whistleblowers. This should impact all of us around the world who have been paying attention. And if you haven't been, get ready. This is about the HPV vaccine, Gardasil and Cervarix, adverse events following HPV vaccination. And they looked at this from 2006 until 2014. And here it is. 10% of all the girls that are getting this shot, the HPV shot, end up in the emergency room. 10% percent one out of every 10 girls being injected with Gardasil ending up in the ER in perhaps one of the most underreported stories of the year Dr. Sin Hang Lee filed an open letter of complaint to the Director General of the World Health Organization Dr. Margaret Chan in this letter he provided allegations of scientific misconduct and fraud by the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and the Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety in this open letter Dr. Lee writes, I have come into possession of documentation which leads me to believe multiple individuals and organizations deliberately set out to mislead Japanese authorities regarding the safety of the human papillomavirus vaccines Gardasil and Cervarex, which were being promoted at the time. Through Freedom of Information Act requests, Dr. Lee found an email trail of research fraud implicating major organizations such as the CDC and the Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety. Dr. Lee's letter concluded that it is my contention these people have not only violated the terms of reference of the World Health Organization's Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety, they have violated the public trust. Immediate, independent, and thorough investigations into their actions with appropriate disciplinary action is the only option available that might restore the public's confidence in worldwide health authorities. During the same time, 
Irish mothers of vaccine-injured daughters were storming the political houses of Ireland and submitting their testimony on record of vaccine fraud, the removal of informed consent, and the loss of medical ethics in Ireland. So the official reason for the HSE withholding the list of known serious debilitating and long-term side effects from the HPV vaccine information literature is because the average adult reading age is 12 years old. And on that basis, the content content of these information leaflets is determined. I hope the absurdity of this logic is not lost on the committee. And as an aside, I want to note that it was Merck, Sharp and Dome who sponsored NALA's 2007 Irish Health Literacy Research Project. And this is the manufacturer of the Gardasil vaccine. In addition, unlike many other countries, the mainstream media ran with the stories and provided, for the most part, fair reporting, and a discussion around the HPV vaccine injuries that have been mounting in Ireland. In the middle of the controversy and public discussion, Ireland's TV3 ran a documentary titled Cervical Cancer Vaccine, Is It Safe? Now on TV3, they say their lives have been ruined by something that's supposed to help. This is cervical cancer vaccine. Is it safe? As the controversy mounted in Ireland, the National Immunization Office scrambled to pull all their information and damning evidence offline that showed orders coming directly from the top, a slide deck given to schools and nurses performing the HPV vaccine immunizations specifically stated and instructed that PACs should not include a patient information leaflet. In 2014, at Dublin City University, Dr. Kevin Kellyher, Assistant National Director of the HSE Public Health Service in Ireland, speaking on patient autonomy, informed consent, and medical ethics, gleefully stated the following. But part of it is equally us being able to put, it, put in place a system where they have enough knowledge to undertake the decisions that are appropriate. Now that's quite a paternalistic approach as well. Because actually what I'm saying is, I want to give them the knowledge to make the decisions I want them to make. While the mothers and fathers continue to fight in Ireland, the world is watching and taking notes on how a country and its people can take back not only its mainstream media, but its healthcare system from pharmaceutical control and major conflicts of interest.